If you're interested in making a detailed platformer just like this one, within Game Maker, using drag and drop, then keep watching. G'day gamers, and welcome back to our drag and drop platformer series. Our series is drawing to a close soon, so I wanted to add a much needed feature to our game, that of sound. The use of music and sound in your game can really elevate the player's experience, and it's an area that should not be overlooked, as it really does make a game feel complete when done correctly. I'm going to show you how to approach the sound design process, add appropriate sounds, use situational sounds like player footsteps, and also enable different music for different rooms. Before we start though, you will notice I'm now using version 2.3 of Game Maker, which I assume you are using as well. There have been many changes with this version, but one worth mentioning first is the new Asset Browser. By default, it'll sort all your resources alphabetically, but you can go over here and choose Custom Order if you'd prefer to have them in any order you like. There are also many other changes, but we'll touch on some of those later. So how do you approach adding sound? Well, I like to first play the game and everywhere you think there should be a sound, write down the sound you need. Once you have a list, start compiling the sounds. Now a great place is down here under notes, you can go down to create and create a note. Now I'm gonna paste in the list that I've compiled from our current game. So this is the sound we need. And now this is the sound file that we're going to use. So I've already gathered the sounds for the game. But where do you get them from? Well, there is a great free website that I use to generate my sounds. It's called bfxr.net. This is what it looks like. Basically, you click on the effect you want. When you're happy with the sound, you export it to a wave, and then you can bring that into Game Maker. You can also click the mutation button, and it'll make a sound that is similar to the previous sound. It's really good for getting the right sound that you're after. Now, this site generates 8-bit chip sounds, but you can even go up to the mixer and combine the sounds just to get what you need. You should save each file and give it a name like SND underscore sound, and then you update the list with that information so you know which sound belongs to which effect, just like I've done here. Once you have all the sounds, you can start to add them and see how they feel in the game. Sometimes I like to turn the sounds down as well if they're ones that play many times over so they don't get annoying for the player. So here those sounds are, I'm going to select them and then drag them over into the sounds group. That will bring them all into Game Maker. If this window comes up, you can click save just to make sure they are saved. Now, if you go over here, right click and close all but this, then you can easily close them all. So let's look at the list we have and let's start adding the sounds. So the first one is related to the picking up of the coins. So let's go into the coin object. And let's go to the collision with the player because that's where we want to play the pick up coin sound. So just here is where we pick up the coins. If you type in audio, you'll be taken to the audio code blocks. And the first one just lets you play an audio sound. So let's drag that in and let's select the sound, which is the coin pickup. Now, if you're playing a sound over and over, it can get very repetitious. So what you want to do is go down to the set audio pitch, drag that in, and you can change the pitch of the current sound that's played. But in order to do that, we need to assign the sound to a variable. I'm just going to call it SND and make it a temporary variable. And now when I refer to the SND variable, I'm actually referring to the sound that's playing. So down here, we can set the pitch and the sound. We don't want to select something. We want to use that reference variable. And for the pitch, one is the default sound. So let's change that to a random range value between 0 0.8 and 1.2. And that will just vary the pitch for each coin that we pick up. Now, I'd also like to add a sound when the coin drops or bounces. So let's go into the step event. I'm going to right click and go to open parent event. And our coin is a child of the O object parent. And we did this so that we could have other objects that inherit the properties of what the coin does, which means that it bounces when it spawns. So that's why you could add other things to your game. Now, when we bounce, that happens in the collision event and bounce is decreased by one. So if bounce is decreased by one after the collision event runs, that means we bounced. 
and that means we want to play a sound effect. So let's capture into a temporary variable what bounce was before we went into the collision script. So let's just call this pre underscore bounce and we want to set it to whatever bounce is. And when this runs, let's have a look and compare if that's still the same. So if pre-bounce is now not equal to bounce, well, that means we bounced in the collision event so we can run our sound. So let's just play the sound of the coin bouncing. And we're going to do the same thing where we want to vary the sound. So let's drag in the pitch, assign it to SND as a temporary variable, and then we'll set SND to our random range once again. A random range of 0.8, say to 1.2. Now you can adjust these values if you're not happy with them, but it gives you an idea. So let's just test that out. Press play. So we've got the coins we pick up. They sound great. And if we make the coins come out of the enemy, we get a lot of sounds happening at once. Let's just check this one as well. So when many coins fall, the sound can be too busy and distracting. So instead, what we can do is check if the sound's already playing, and if it is, we don't play it again. This way we can limit the number of sounds of the same type that are played. So just under audio, we can actually look for an if audio is playing code block. Let's drag that in, and let's ask if this sound is already playing. And if it's not playing, well then we can play it. And that will just limit how often we have to hear that sound. Now let's go to our list and see what's next. We have the jumping of the player and the landing. So the player jumping happens in our check jump script. So let's go into our scripts and let's go to our check jump. And just here is where the player jumps. So let's play a sound right there. So we want to have the player jump sound. There it is there. And then we need the sound for when we land. Well, that actually happens in our air state. So if we go to our player, and then we go to our air state, and then down here, after we've landed on the ground, we create some dust, and that's when we know that we've hit the ground. So right here, we can play our sound, and we just want to play the sound of landing. Great, now look at our notes again, and the next thing we had to do was the player footsteps. Now footsteps are something that add a really nice atmosphere to the game, but they have to be done right, so that when the player is stepping on the ground is when we're hearing the sound. So let's go have a look at the player sprite, and in the walk sprite. So what we can see here is when we are walking, it's not till there that the player actually touches the ground on frame four. And then if we keep going, we'll see the next one happens at frame nine. So when our image index is either four or nine is when we're touching the ground and when we want to play the sound. Now remember though, image index is a decimal. It's incremented each step by the speed of the sprite. So it's basically eight over our room speed, which is eight over 60. So image index is incremented by eight over 60 per step. So we can't just check for when image index is four or nine, as it may never be exactly those values. Instead, we can check the floor of image index, which means round the value down. So when you floor a number, say 4.3, that's floored down to four. When you floor 4.9, it's also floored down to four. Now that also means that the floor of image index will be four for multiple frames in a row. So we should check that the sound is not being played before playing it. And as long as the sound is long enough, that will ensure it only plays once per footstep. So let's go to the walk state. Just in here under the player step event, we have our walk state. And let's create a check for a footstep. I'm just going to do it under our check jump. So I'm going to copy that and paste it. And then I'll create another script. 
And then we can just check for footstep. Now I'm going to take a copy of that name and go over to our scripts. We want to right click, go to create, and we want to create a new script. Just going to give it the name of check footstep. And let's just drag this up here so we can see it better. Now here's a new part of GameMaker 2.3, and that is the declare a new function code block. So all scripts in 2.3 now are actually going to be declared as functions. And all that means is that when you create the script, you just need to apply it to the right here of the function code block. So over here where you get to see the list, everything is going to be indented except for the declare a new function. And this also means you can actually have multiple functions in each script. We're not doing that at the moment, but it is something to be aware of. So we want to check for our footsteps. So we need to check if our floor of image index is equal to four or our floor of image index is equal to nine. And because we want to check two conditions, we need to do that with an if expression. So we're going to look for the floor of image index is equal to four or the floor of image index is equal to nine. And if that's the case, then we also first need to check if the audio is not already playing. And that's of our footstep. And if it's not playing, well, then we can play it. Now, I want to vary the pitch of this again. So I'm going to store the ID into a variable, and it's just a temporary variable. And then we're going to go over and we're going to change the pitch of SND to be random range between, say, 0 0.7 and 1.3. I'm doing a larger range because the footstep sound that I have is really deep, and changing the pitch actually doesn't make a huge difference. But if you have a footstep sound that's not as deep as what I'm using, you will notice a change in the pitch like this. So let's press play and test that out. So we can see there, as we walk, we're getting a sound each time that our foot touches the ground. And we've got a jump sound and also a landing sound, so they're all working well. Now let's go have a look at our list again. And our next sound is for the collisions with the player and the enemy. So let's go into our player, where we land on the enemy. So that's going to be here in our collision with the enemy. And this is the point here where we're landing on the enemy's head. So let's drag across another play audio and let's select the sound for when we land on enemy. Now, if we don't land on the enemy and we touch the enemy, we actually get hurt or damaged. And that happens down the bottom here. So in this section here, we can play the sound for if the enemy damages us. So let's go here where the player gets damaged, uh, just here. Great. Now there's not many left. We're looking at the sound for when the enemy dies or falls down. Now, if we go and look at the enemy when they're dead, they actually fall down, not just here, not yet, not yet, but right there at frame eight. So they don't flop down and hit the ground until there. And that's where I'd like to play the sound. So that'll also give me the opportunity to show you an additional way to play sounds at particular frames. So let's go to our enemy object. And let's go to our step event and into our die state. So just here, let's close some of these up. Now here's our die state. So because our image index is possibly a decimal, we need to check if it's greater than or equal to eight. So when the enemy dies, we only want to play the sound once. So we need to do a check in here. And I'm going to do an expression check again. And we need to ask a question and say, if our image index is greater than or equal to eight, because it's a decimal, remember, and I'm going to set a variable to tell us if the sound is already played. And I'm going to call it full sound played. Now the exclamation mark at the start indicates a not symbol. 
which means that we want the opposite of whatever the value is. So I'll take a copy of that. So let's go and create this variable just under variable definitions. I'm just going to click add and create a false sound played and set it to false. So that means the sound has not played yet. We'll set it to true when the sound actually plays. So if it hasn't played yet and we're greater than image index eight, then we can play the sound. And it's the sound of the enemy dying. But we also need to set this variable because we've played it once already. So our full sound played becomes true. And that way we can limit the sound to only play once. Now the last sound that we had to do was the player dying. And where that happens is in the check HP script, because that's the point we move them into the die state. So let's go into our check HP script. And we'll just drag this up here so we can see it. And right here, we move the player to the dead state. Now this is a great place to add the sound. And the reason is because this code only runs once. You can set up variables like I've just shown, but really you wanna look for opportunities where you only have to run the code once. It's just more efficient than creating variables and managing it that way. So right here, we can just add the sound of the player dying. And let's test it all out. So we've got the sound of the coins. We've got the sound of the damaging of the enemies. And the damaging of the player. And the sound of when the player dies as well. That's all great, but you know what we really need? And that is some music. Music really helps give your game some much needed atmosphere. There are a few places where you can get free video game music to use in your games. One such place is from Oz.net. This is his site. I'll put a link in the description so you can get there. But his music is available under the Creative Commons license. And that means you can use it in your projects as long as you give credit to the source and provide a link to the license. I've downloaded two songs to use, which are available in the description as well. I'd like to add these songs and set it up so we have a different song playing when moving to different rooms. To do so, we will assign the music to a DS map, which is a game maker data structure, which basically can hold a key and a value. The key is just a label describing what you are storing and the value is just what you want to store. Each DS map can hold any number of these keys, so they are great for storing multiple pieces of data which you can retrieve later. I like to think of a DS map as a chest, which you can place envelopes in. Each envelope has a description written on it with some info inside. You can then pull out any envelope you need and get the info from inside it. So let's add a DS map to our game under the O Game Create event. So just down here, if we type in map, we can create a DS map. Now I'm just going to call ours music underscore map. And just like we did with our DS list, if you create a DS map, you need to ensure you go to a cleanup event and have it destroyed afterwards. There is no drag and drop code for this. So we want to put DS map destroy. And we type the name of the map, which is music map. Now let's bring the songs in that we need. So just down here, I've got two songs for each room. I'm just gonna drag them into the sounds folder. Here it is here. And you wanna click save if that occurs. I'm just gonna take a copy of the name and also I'm going to decrease these down to 0 0.4 for the volume because they are a little bit loud. So let's close those. And now that we have the names of the songs, I want to add them to the DS map. So here we can set a map value. We want to know the name of the map. So it's music underscore map. Now the key is our description on our envelope. So for us, it'll be the room we want the song to play in. And then the value will just be the name of the sound results. So if we go look at our rooms, So for our key, we're just going to write the name of the room. So R underscore level one and which song we want to play in that particular room. 
I'm just going to paste in what I chose from before. So it's the room one music and it's called perihelium. Let's take a copy and a paste of that. And we can do level two. And we can take a copy of the other room name. I'm going to press F2 and then Control C. And then we'll paste this one in like that. So there are our two map entries. So as long as you put the name of the room and then the song that you want to play, this system will work. Now, when do we want to play the sound? Well, the best time is when the room starts. And we have a room start event in our game. So let's use that. Now, the first thing we want to do when we want to play the music is to know what we should be playing. So we go over here to our map resources and there is a get map value. Let's drag that over, ensure it's under the repeat so it doesn't get repeated. And our map is music underscore map. Now for the key, we can actually write the room in here. And room is an inbuilt variable that will return the name of the current room. So we can use that to ensure we're getting the correct map value. I'm going to store whatever it pulls out into a variable called music and store it as a temp. Now what it's pulling out, if we go back to our create event, is the value here. So we're getting either this name or this name, depending on which room we're in. And this name is the name of the song. So if we know the name of the song, we can then just play it. But we also need to make sure that we're not currently playing it. So let's go to audio. Let's go, is audio playing? And if audio of music is not playing, well then we can play it. And we want to make sure we select the loop because we want to loop this. So let's test this out. Press play. Now we have our song and when we move to another room, we get we get quite a mess so what's happening there is we have both songs playing at once we need to be able to stop the current music when moving to a new room so when we play audio we can store the id of the audio in a variable and we can then use that id to allow us to stop it if it's not already playing so down here where we play our music let's store the id of that into a variable called current music. And before we actually play it, let's stop playing current music. So if we've already been in here before and we've assigned the music we're playing to this variable, this will just allow us to stop it before we play the next bit of music. So the only thing we need to do is take a copy of this and just create that as a variable. So we'll do that in the create event and we'll just create a variable called current music and we'll just set it to zero, just so that variable exists. So let's test that out. And that works much better. So that works great, but it would be really nice to have the music fade from one song to the next when moving to a new room. So if you're a Patreon supporter, I'll add that as a Patreon bonus for this episode. And you'll be able to view that bonus video over on the Patreon site. When that's added, it sounds like this. It sounds more professional and just gives the game a nicer feel. Speaking of Patreons, I want to thank these legendary Patreons who support my channel, enabling me to create this free content for you guys. Dylan Jackson, Fox and Raven Ent, Kaiser Ho, and Michael. These epic supporters also enable me to do what I do, so thank you as well. Sky Devil Palm, Sheldon ENTP, Salvatore Capolino, Claypot, and Dan Half. And lastly, thank you to these rare supporters for their support as well. If you would like to learn more about Game Maker, I have a great course over on Udemy, which is one of the highest rated Game Maker 2 courses on the site. There's a coupon code in the description, which offers over 90% off. And there's also a 30 day money back guarantee if you're not happy with the course. That's all for this one. Thanks for joining me. I'll talk to you in the next one.